Hello there, so I want to show you how you can actually calculate portfolio expected return and portfolio standard deviation and then I want to demonstrate to you how you can actually use the solver function in Excel to either maximize your return in your portfolio given a set level of standard deviation that you're comfortable with or how you can minimize the standard deviation if you have a specific level of expected returns that you're trying to achieve. Then you can also maximize the Sharpe ratio, which would be the ratio of expected return to standard deviation. But the first thing that I need to show you is how you can actually use matrix algebra in Excel in order to calculate portfolio expected return and portfolio standard deviation. Uh, now, just as a brief reminder, let me take you back to what you saw on the PowerPoints earlier and that would be this right here. The portfolio expected return is going to be W transpose mu where W is your vector, your K by 1 vector of the weights in your portfolio and mu is the K by 1 vector of the expected returns to each of the assets. And so if we want to get expected return, we need a weights vector, we need an expected return ve vector, and we need to take W transpose mu. So let's come over here and do that. What I've done is I've went and collected some data on a handful of assets just to try to demonstrate this to you. By no means is this intended to be comprehensive, but I think it will be informative and, and interesting. So what I've done is I've grabbed eight different assets. Uh, this S&P 500 exchange traded fund, the Spider Fund, uh, MDY, which is the S&P mid cap exchange traded fund, SLY, which is the S&P small cap exchange traded fund. So you've got large cap, mid cap, small cap equities, U.S. equities. So I went and also got the uh, IFA minus the U.S. So that's going to be Europe, Far East, and Australia. So that's basically... Um, you know, developed countries minus America. And then I also went and got an emerging markets ETF. So these are basically all equity exchange traded funds covering large cap US, mid cap US, small cap US, developed countries excluding the US, and then emerging markets countries. This is a US Treasuries ETF, so that's US government bonds. This is a corporate government bonds, US corporate bonds, and then this is a gold ETF. So really the only thing that I've left out would be maybe US municipal bonds and then also global sovereign debt and global corporate debt. But again, this isn't meant to be comprehensive. Just want to demonstrate how you can do this. But it's you know it's fairly broad ranging in terms of asset classes that we have represented. So what I did is I went and got the last 60 months worth of data. I calculated the average monthly return to these different asset classes. And you can see that's the average monthly return to each of the asset classes. No surprise, uh, I'm doing this in January of 2012. Gold has been on a tear over the last five years. And then uh, S&P 500 has really struggled. And so have most of the global equity indices, to be honest with you. Uh, Treasuries have done well. Corporate bonds have done okay ever since the recovery coming on the heels of the financial collapse. I've also calculated the variance covariance matrix, which I'll show you at some other point in time how to do that, but just take it as a given that this is the variance covariance matrix. So along the diagonal, I have the variances of these assets, and then on the off diagonals, I have the covariances. So what we have is we have this is our mu vector, and this is our sigma matrix. So the only other thing that we need is our weight vector. And if we have the weight vector, then we can dive right into it and we can calculate the uh, portfolio expected return and standard deviation. Keep in mind that what we're doing uh, assumes that the returns that we've observed over the past five years are indicative of the returns we expect to earn over the next five years. So just a big assumption going into it. Now that we've said that, let's do it. Let's go ahead and calculate our expected return to our portfolio. I'm going to start off with a portfolio that's just equally weighted. So I've got one eighth of my portfolio in each of these assets. This is gonna be a check figure for me just to make sure that I've done my weights correctly. So the weights have to add up to 100%, right? Okay, so what we wanna do right here to get portfolio expected return is we wanna just do W transpose mu. So here's our W and we're gonna transpose it and we're gonna multiply it by mu over here and that should give us our expected return. So M mult matrix multiplication, we're going to transpose the W vector. We're going to multiply it against mu. Always, always, always when you're doing matrix multiplication in Excel, you hold down control shift and enter and it spits out the result. Now to get our portfolio standard deviation, 
what we need to do is we need to take W, transpose, multiply it by sigma, and then multiply that by W. So that's coming from our PowerPoint slide as well. You can see over on our PowerPoint slide that our uh, portfolio standard deviation is W transpose sigma W, and we need to take the square root of that. So we'll do that over here. All right, here we go. We need to take the square root of matrix multiply, and what are we going to multiply? Well, first off, it's going to be the transpose of that times sigma. Okay, so now think of that, think of that matrix multiply as its own vector, and we need to multiply that by W again. So I'm going to come back inside here, and we're going to do M mult. And so we're going to take, remember, this right here on the, on the interior, that represents W transpose W. That needs to be matrix multiplied against W, not transpose this time. Close up all the parentheses, parentheses I should say, and I think I did one too many. Uh, hold down Control Shift Enter, and it should spit out the portfolio standard deviation. And you can see we get a portfolio standard deviation of 4.462%. Then we can calculate a sharp ratio portfolio expected return over standard deviation. Technically speaking, we should subtract out the risk-free rate in the numerator, but it's not a big deal. Uh, we'll just call this the sharp ratio, even though we haven't taken into consideration the, uh, the risk-free rate. So there's our sharp ratio, not really all that impressive. But now what we can start to do is we can start to manipulate things a little bit. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to say, okay, if I look over here, I see that the smallest standard deviation, so the single asset in our portfolio with the smallest standard deviation is this corporate bond ETF. It's got a monthly standard deviation of 2.858%. So what I'm interested to know is could we construct a portfolio that has a standard deviation equal to or less than that, but that gets us an average return higher than the monthly average return of 0.539%. So in other words, what we're going to say is, could we hit this minimum standard deviation but somehow get a higher expected return than what this asset by itself is doing? In order to do that, first off, I'm just going to actually slide those weights over to begin with. Don't worry, those will change. I'm going to slide this formula over as well. It's just a check figure for us. It's also going to be used as a constraint. And then these formulas can almost be slid over, but I need to lock in some things. Specifically, I need to lock in the C column, which is my mu column. Remember, you still got to hold down Control Shift when you hit Enter. Now, I can copy and paste that over. And then over in this formula, which is the standard deviation, I need to lock in my sigma matrix. And my sigma matrix is this N through U. Control Shift, Enter. I can copy and paste that over, copy and paste that over. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the solver function. And again, what I want to accomplish is I want to try to max out my return, but keep the standard deviation at or below this number, which happens to be the lowest standard deviation of all the assets in our portfolio. So I go to the solver function and the target cell. And for those of you that didn't see, the way that you get to the solver function is you go up to the data, the data tab at the top, and you click on solver. The target cell, what we want to do is we want to max out our expected return. So we click on the expected return and we tell it to max it out by changing all of the weights. But we have to give it some constraints. The first constraint is that the sum of all of the weights has to equal 1 or 100%. So when we add up all the weights in our portfolio, we have to have 100%. The next constraint is our portfolio standard deviation has to be less than or equal to this 2.858, which again is the lowest standard deviation of any of the single individual assets in our portfolio. So we click on that and then I'm going to hit the solver button and we'll, we'll probably get uh, an interesting solution to this and then we'll probably come back in and add another constraint. Okay, so let's take a look at what we get here for the answer. And you can see here are the weights that Excel has, has spit out for us. Uh, you can see they add up to 100%, so we have 100% of our portfolio invested, and it gives us an expected return of 1.3127%, and it gives us a standard deviation of 2.858%. So this is really quite extraordinary. This is the power of portfolios and diversification. What do I mean by that? Well, over here, 
you know, we look at all these standard deviations and clearly one asset had a much lower standard deviation than any of the others and that was this corporate bond ETF. However, its expected return really wasn't that impressive. I mean, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't through the roof. So by putting together a portfolio, we're able to come up with same standard deviation as that asset. So, you know, we've achieved this really low level of risk and volatility, but look at the expected return that we're now achieving just by diversifying our portfolio with these optimal weights. But what I want you to, so that's powerful and impressive and useful. And look, you know, here's the sharp ratios to all of the individual assets over here. Look at the sharp ratio that we're able to achieve by employing these optimal weights. So man, we blow all of these sharp ratios out of the water. There's no single asset in our portfolio that can come close to competing with the sharp ratio that we generate over here. Notice, however, we are short selling in this portfolio. Specifically, we are short selling this IFA uh, exchange traded fund. Remember, that's the Europe, Far East, and Australia exchange traded fund. So it's basically developed countries minus the US. And what the optimal weights are telling us is we should basically short sell 100% of our portfolio in that um, in in that particular exchange traded fund. So in other words, these ideal weights, optimal weights are saying whatever the value of your portfolio is, go short sell exactly that amount. And then you're doubling down and everything else is essentially what it's telling you. Well, you might be able to do that. It's possible, but there are also a lot of situations where you won't be able to short sell or you might not be able to short sell uh, that magnitude. So another thing you can do is you can go back into the solver and you can say, well, let me just add a constraint. And the next constraint is I'm going to say, Let's make it so that all these weights actually have to be greater than or equal to zero. So in that case, we're not going to allow any short selling. So now, same constraints, except we've added the constraint of no short selling. You saw that you're going to get a much different solution here. Okay, so, oh, all right, now look at the solution. You see it's very, very different. It's telling you to put 0% in quite a few of these assets, and it's telling you to put the lion's share of your money into this uh, corporate bond portfolio which makes perfect sense because we're trying to get this low standard deviation it's telling you to put another fair chunk into the gold and then into the treasuries with just a little bit into the small cap ETF with US stocks if you do that you still hit this standard deviation of 2.858 percent but now your expected return has gone down pretty considerably now this is still demonstrating the power of portfolios because this corporate bond ETF is only getting 0.539% return on average per month. However, the portfolio is getting 0.8495%, which is quite a significant jump. And you can see in the sharp ratio, we're certainly beating the corporate bond ETF. And we're also beating gold, which happens to have the highest sharp ratio of any of the assets in our portfolio. So this is still demonstrating the power of portfolio optimization and diversification. We're still getting a much higher sharp ratio than we could with any of the individual assets. But certainly if you can't short sell, both the expected return and the sharp ratio is taking a hit. Okay, next thing I want to accomplish. Maybe instead of wanting to minimize the variance in our portfolio, what we're wanting to do, try to get this high return. Well, you're, you're going to struggle to get anything higher than 1.462%. But what we can do is we can see, all right, if we want to hit 1.462%, if you tried to do it without a portfolio, if you tried to do it without diversification, then you would just invest in gold. And on average, you get this 1.462% per month. But you'd be bearing standard deviation or a risk of 6% basically per month. So. We're interested to know, could we get that kind of expected return but somehow lower our risk? So I'm just going to copy and paste this over just to get us started, just like I did last time. Now I'm going to go back into the solver. I'm going to reset everything. So now our target cell is actually going to be our standard deviation. We don't want to maximize it. We want to minimize it. Uh, by changing, again, we're going to change the weights and let's add in our constraints. So the first constraint is sum of the portfolio weights has to equal one. Our next constraint is going to be that now we want our expected return, that number, to be equal to or greater than this number right here, which is the average return per month that gold's been achieving. 
I'm also going to put a short selling constraint on it. Well, you know what? Let's do it without the short selling constraint at first and see what happens. So go ahead and click solve, see what kind of output we get. And you can see that once again, I mean, whew, there is the power of diversification and portfolio optimization. We're still hitting this 1.462% average monthly return, but look how much we've lowered the standard deviation. We've almost cut it in half. If you were going to try to do this just with gold, you're bearing a 6% standard deviation per month. That's the risk. Through the portfolio, you're down to 3% risk. Gives you a massive sharp ratio. But we kind of get a similar result to what we got earlier, which was it's telling you got a short sell EFA like a madman. And again, you might be able to do that. You might not be able to do it. You might not want to do it. Um, you know, mutual funds and certain other uh, investment pools can't short sell. And so it's useful to know that, some, that you can go in and you can establish one more constraint. So let's add the no short selling constraint. So we're going to say that all the weights have to be greater than or equal to zero. Throw that in there. Solve it and see what we get now. And we get a solution that frankly is not all that interesting. <laughs> you get a solution that says, all right, invest all your money in gold, except put just a little bit in this TLT. And that keeps you at the 1.462% return, but it slightly reduces your standard deviation. So you can see that if you put in the no short selling constraint, it definitely changes the outcome that you get. All right, let's do one more thing. Let's just maximize the sharp ratio. Let's just say, what could we do? What could, what could we do in terms of portfolio optimization to just get the highest sharp ratio possible? So we're going to go back into the solver. I'm going to reset everything, click OK. And now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to maximize that sharp ratio. I'm just going to max it out. And we're going to do it by changing all of the portfolio weights here. And the only constraint I'm going to put in is they got to add up to 100. So all the portfolio weights have to equal one. Click OK. I'm going to solve it. We might get a crazy solution. That's OK if we do. Let's just see what happens. OK, so we actually get something relatively similar to what we got back in this column when we didn't put the short selling constraint in there. And you can see that the outcome we get is simply you want to load up on, uh, on the corporate bond ETF, you want to load up on gold, you want to load up on the emerging markets and the treasuries, load up on the S&P large cap and mid cap, and you just want to short sell like crazy the EFA. Um, let's go back in, and if you do that, you get a sharp ratio of 0.46, which is almost twice as high as anything you can get with an individual asset. Let's go in, add the short selling constraint, see what happens. So we're going to highlight all of our portfolio weights, and we're going to say that they have to be greater than or equal to zero. Click OK, and we're going to solve it and see what we get. And looks like if you want to max this out without short selling, that what it tells you to do is basically put 35% in gold, 38% in the corporate bond ETF and another 24-25% in US Treasuries and a little bit into US small cap stocks. If you do that, you're going to have average return of 0.9272 and a standard deviation of 3.086 and a sharp ratio of 0.3. So I just want to reiterate and reemphasize the power of diversification. Diversification is going to allow you to achieve a much higher sharp ratio than you could get by using any of the individual assets by themselves. You can get there one of two ways. Mostly the way that you get there is by minim minimizing the standard deviation of your portfolio given a certain level of expected returns. You can see we're getting 0.9272% here on average per month. Over here, that's probably the closest. So you can see we're actually getting a higher average return than that asset with a lower risk. And so there it is, portfolio optimization in Excel.